Okay, thanks everybody for coming. Uh, we appreciate you coming. I know this is tough times for a lot of people and we're, uh, it's, it's, it's uh, great fun to get together occasionally and put together a little bit of, uh, a little bit of AIM training while, uh, while we're all kind of stuck in our, in our houses and our homes. So thanks again for everybody for coming. I, we do appreciate it. Um, we're gonna talk about uh, the time compare bar today. We're gonna, uh, we're gonna talk about it and with, with a little bit of a different program today, we've got a, we've got a co-host that we're gonna bring in, uh, James Clay from, from Vimmer World. And um, but first I think we'll, uh, we'll, we'll go, around, um, go around the folks that are gonna help ask you, answer your questions and answers today. So we'll, uh, and, and have them introduce themselves real quickly. First we'll talk with uh, Robbie. Hey, uh, uh, I'm Robbie, work out of the California office. Um, primarily focused on um, custom harnessing solutions uh, and ECU driver development, uh, but with a healthy dose of repairing um, uh, TLC to all the hardware systems that you guys put in some pretty aggressive environments. Perfect, thank you, Robbie. Uh, Cameron. Hello, I am Cameron and I am based out of the East Coast office in Roanoke, Virginia, and I am primarily focused on the custom harnessing as well and also repairs out of the East Coast office. Thank you, Cameron. Brick. Yes, I'm Brick and that is brick like a brick house. Uh, I get confused <laughs> quite often. Brent, Rick. Brook sometimes. Uh, I'm also out of the East Coast office, uh, one of the technicians. Uh, so I do repairs, travel to uh, various racetracks to do trackside technical support. And uh, I've also, uh, with the help from uh, Cameron, started working on doing some wiring too, which is pretty cool. This is Brick's first time joining us, so that's uh, that, that's pretty cool. We're happy to have him. We uh, have a couple of other new ones, and the first one we'll we'll, we'll chat with is Emiliano from from Italy. Emiliano is uh, coming to us all the way from uh, from Italy today, and he's going to join us and answer some questions and uh, and eventually do some um, do some presentation in himself. Emiliano, tell us a little bit about yourself. Uh, hi, Emiliano. Emiliano speaking from uh, from Italy. I'm in uh, in the Milan office. I'm a software developer. I've been working for Aiming for the last uh, 20 years. I developed uh, the Ray Studio 2 analysis and uh, I'm now working at the Ray Studio 3 software together with uh, some, uh, some colleagues. Perfect. Thank you very much. We're so happy to have you here, Emiliano. It's, uh, it, it's, uh, your, your presence here will be great help for everybody that uh, is asking questions as we go forward. So thank you very much. Thank uh, you for having me here. Very, very welcome. And then uh, finally, we're, we have a co-host today, and, and uh, as part of our um, our first crack at co-hosting, no pressure, James. But the uh, <laughs> the uh, we're uh, we're it's from now forward, not all of them, but a good chunk, and we'll be uh, announcing uh, the next one uh, at, at the end of this program, who will be co-hosting uh, on Thursday. But uh, we're bringing in uh, different folks that are experts in the in the field, and and driver coaches and, and, and heavy users and, and different things to give different perspective, perspectives of using our, our products. So James, tell us a little bit about, uh, little bit about yourself. All right, um, James Clay, owner of Bimmer World, um, and we are an AIM dealer. And I'm an AIM user and a data user. I've been using um, data for over 20 years now, um, kind of throughout my driving and racing career. And it's, it's just been a tremendous tool for me. Um, and really, in my opinion, helped me advance much faster uh, than I otherwise would. And so, you know, I'm, uh, I, I'm at the track 150 days of the year and I'm, I'm using data every moment I'm on the track almost. Perfect. And I appreciate, I appreciate you being here. I appreciate you being the guinea pig. I know we've, uh, we've, uh, we've chatted a little bit about it and, uh, and I'm confident that things are going to go great. It's going to be, a, we're going to have a good time. So thank awesome. you. Okay, so as we as we get started, I'm going to talk a little bit about the uh, the time compare bar, some of the technical pieces of it. Give us the first uh, three or four minutes of just how it kind of works, and then we're going to more or less you know, turn it over to to James. He's going to show us some some best practices of times that he's used, you, you know, how he uses it, how some of his customers use it, and things like that. And we'll jump back and forth and. You know, and of course, we're going to be looking at for some of your questions, um, questions and answers as we uh, as we as we go. We'll answer some of them on the fly. If you have a, a, a question about the 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 time compare topic, make sure you throw them into the the question and answer box, not into the chat. We're, we're, we are watching the chat, and some of the guys will be answering you there as well. But uh, if you want it answered here during the uh, during the session, and especially if it is directly you know, part of the time compare bar. 
um, throw it into the questions and answers. Uh, uh, that's why we have so many folks here helping us. If they can answer it real quickly there, they'll answer it uh, in a written form. Everybody can see that. And then um, if it's something that we're missing or we want to go ahead and hit the rest of the way, uh, we'll, we, we'll be glancing at the, the question bar and, uh, and, and grabbing them. Or we will wait until towards the end and we'll, have, uh, we'll open it up and we'll, uh, we'll, we'll run through them too. So as before we actually get started, I'm going to, uh, we like to do some polling here. We, the, the, the polls we, that we put up here are, are important to us. They're, uh, they're all about helping us understand and, and, and begin to um, help us. What, what are our next, um, our next webinar is going to be about. So the first poll that you see up in front of you there is, you know, what uh, AIM devices do you own? What, what, are, uh, what are you using that, uh, that you're here grabbing some training for? This one here is multiple choice. So you can select uh, all the different pieces of uh, hardware that you own. If it's uh, other down there in the bottom, make sure you uh, go ahead and check that and maybe over in the, in the chat box, uh, you know, other equals, you know, whatever it happens to be down there. So that would be helpful. The, um, uh, while that is going, I'm going to go ahead and change the share on my screen and uh, get Ray Studio 2 up here where we will start to start to discuss the, um, the, the, the time compare bar itself. We'll let that go for just another uh, you know, 30 seconds or something. But let's start talking about the time compare bar. The, the, the time compare bar is, is this bar that's across the bottom of, of the screen. The, um, it, what you're looking at is that that box only shows up if you have two laps that are active. If I turn off, you know, one of these laps, the uh, that time compare bar would go away. We're, we're looking at, uh, you know, two different laps, two best laps or, or two laps from two different sessions. The um, if you're if that bar is not there, I'm going to go ahead and end that polling real quickly, and grab and throw that out of the way, so it's out of our way. And then um, that time compare bar is, is such a powerful tool. Let's talk about in a minute why you, you may or may not see it sometimes, but let's talk about the, the basic makeup of it first. The, um, when you're looking at this, when you have two laps open, you're, the fastest of the two laps is going to be a flat line. Now, if it was faster all the way, that, fl that flat line may be totally across the bottom, right? But, uh, and, and, and the other lap being compared to it might be all above it. We've selected a couple laps here where it always is at zero, zero at the beginning because we it restarts as you cross the start finish line or you or the other driver or two of your own laps. It always sets at zero when you first cross the line. So you'll see the zero here, see zero here at the left edge. And then if you are below that line, the blue lap in this particular case, it's the, it's the lap from session B that we're looking at. If it's below that line, you're faster. And if it's above that line, you're, you're slower. So I'm going to put the cursor right about in here just as an example. And then if we slide our eyes all the way to the right, you're going to see a number over here. Six being the reference, seven being lap seven, the blue lap seven being the lap that is being compared against the faster of the two. And you can see that with the minus 0 0.114, you can tell that it's uh, you know, 0.114 seconds faster at that spot on the track, right? Entering turn, turn uh, the, the corner here at VIR. And you can see that the, at that point, the, the one lap, the blue lap was a little bit quicker. And this is cumulative. So it's not, you know, in segments or anything like that, but it's all the way across the lap. So if we just slide all the way down to, you know, say right here at the, uh, at the end of the back straightaway, end of the, uh, the S is going up the hill, the, the, the blue lap is now point not 0 0.095 or almost a tenth of a second slower because it's above the, the red line, okay? That's the basic way that that bar works, okay? The, um, I get a question sometimes, is it's not there, right? I, I, I've opened up my software, Roger, I've got a couple of laps open, why, why aren't I seeing the, 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 um, uh, the time compare bar? And there, and there can be only a couple of reasons. And the, the, the most common is if you are up here in this upper, right-hand corner, you've got, a, you've got an icon there in the measures graph, and it's the time distance button. If you are in time mode across the bottom, we're in distance across the bottom, distance units across the bottom, if I click on this little time icon, you see that it changes the x-axis to time, and there is no time compare bar. We do not compare in time and tell you how far ahead you are because it's uh, just the way the shift works. So uh, if you're not seeing a bar across the bottom and you have more than one lap open, 
almost always it's because you're in time mode. Go ahead and click on that and go back to distance mode and then you'll probably see it. There's one other time that uh, occasionally I have had folks that uh, will have a problem not seeing it and it's when there is a setting, by default it's turned on, but if you go up to the options and settings dialog box, you'll get this set measures dialog box. And there is a setting right here about in the middle of the screen that says show time compare. If that is unchecked and I applied an exit, I'm not going to do that obviously at this point, but if that was unchecked, you would uh, not see the time compare bar as well. So keep that in mind. It's, it's either that or it's the, um, or you're in time mode. Those are the two things that will, uh, will, will break the time compare bar. To get to that, I know that's kind of hard to remember sometimes, options, settings. The other shortcut of getting there is when you're in the measures graph bar, if you click on the little, um, little wrench over here on the, on the upper right-hand corner, you end up with, the, with that same, that same uh, options window, okay? So that's how, that's how the time compare bar generally works. And, uh, and if I had a, a third lap up here, let, I'll just add a third lap real quickly. If I had a third lap, you would be seeing three different laps of data. You know, I, I would change the, change the color if I wanted to from that green, I'm sorry, that red to a, to a green to make it to kind of stand out a little bit more. Now we have a fast lap across the bottom and two laps being compared. You can compare as many as you want. Two for our work today is, uh, is, is what we're going to look at. It's a little easier to see. Okay. Perfect. Now that we got a pretty good handle on what is it, you know, how does it work and why would it not work? I'm going to go over one more quick thing that, um, that I did see flash past in the questions and answers. You know, you're talking about the, the snap function and it, it's kind of a cool little thing that let's say you, you had a couple laps that were not perfectly aligned. If I come back in here and I turn on the snap function, which will be, uh, we did briefly chat about it in another webinar, but, uh, Maybe we'll chat about it uh, in more depth in another one. But when I turn on the snap bar, you see each of the two laps are now freely disassociated from it themselves. It's no longer snapping to a full lap of data for each. I can now move individually, the, the, the basically moving the start finish line of, the, of, of, of a single lap here and see what the time compare bar is doing down there below. It is going to the beginning of each of the two laps and is adjusting depending on, you know, I'm telling it that, you know, I'm, these two cars are, are apart. The time compare bar even works when the snap mode is, is set. So is, 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 is off and allowing the data to freely float. So keep that in mind. You, you will still see a time compare bar, but it's a little bit, uh, a little bit concerning whether or not it's super accurate. So make sure your laps are, you know, start finish lines at the same spot and you do not have to use the, the, the snap bar to, in order to use this to do it maybe correctly. So keep, keep that in mind as you're, uh, as you're looking at it. Okay. So that's kind of the detail behind it. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to kind of turn it over to James. James is going to talk about this in more of a, okay, Roger, you've, you've, uh, you've bored us all with how it works and, and when, and turn it on and off, right. Kind of thing. Let, how does this work? I've got a couple of laps here. What is the right way to, what is the best way to either coach yourself, coach other people? How, how do we use this thing to go faster? Go ahead, James. Okay. So what's important to me, um, you know, in, in general uh, with, with data, it's only as good as your ability to, to process it. And, you know, when I think, um, especially in the environment most, most of us are in with, um, you know, we get out of the car, uh, we've got to check pressures, we've got to make sure we have gas, we've got to, you know, do a checklist, et cetera. Um, it's, it's difficult to devote the time that you really need um, to analyze the data. And, you know, and of course, it, it, in my opinion, um, you, you, you really should be analyzing data between every session. And so it's, it's ideal, not at the end of the day, not when you're back at your hotel, but if you can immediately analyze what you did, um, where you can improve and then go implement that improvement next, next time out, or, you know, at least start thinking about that improvement as soon as possible. So your, your brain can, can start marinating. Um, but to do that, um, I, th I think this is, is one of the, one of the absolute best tools. Um, data, data is like an onion. Um, it has multiple layers and, and the outside layer is this time compare bar. Um, because it, it basically tells you, Okay, I pull up two laps that I'm that I that I care about, and we we called them session A and session B. Here, it could be um, a session that I'm trying something different. It can be 
uh, a different track condition that I need to know about. It could be a different driver um, as a coach that I'm working with or something like that. Um, in, in my case, often it's a teammate and I want to see what my teammate did differently. Um, so the first thing I do is, is pick my, pick my two laps. And, uh, you know, in this case, and in general, it's usually my fast two laps, as long as they're representative. And then I say, okay, where do I need to look? And uh, I'm going to take over control of this Absolutely. mouse. There you go. Um, the time can bear bar shows me where I need to look as I, as I'm looking across the bar here, where do I need to look? Well, there's a big difference here. There's a big difference here, and there's a big difference here. You know, as a, as a coach, I would say um, I'm, I'm generally looking for three things to work on uh, in a given session because I think that that's um, what you can, you know, while you're doing all the other things that you have to do while you're out on track, um, three is about what most people can actually work on and as long as they're spread throughout the track. So this, this data set just happens to have three places spaced around the track, perfect to work on. So that time compare bar, shows me where I'm going to, I'm going to start my analysis. Um, so to, to go into these individual points, um, what's happening here? Well, you know, this, the speed trace is always in, important to me. Um, if, if I'm, uh, I'm going to take this from the aspect of, of if I'm the driver uh, with the blue lap and I'm comparing it to somebody with um, that drove the red lap. Um, it, it looks like, uh, I could carry a little bit more speed into this braking zone. Ultimately, um, I could come off the brake a little bit earlier. I'm missing some mid corner speed. Um, and then there's, there's something here about, um, you know, why do I not have this speed here? What's, what's happening? There's a, a little bit of a, a give and a take, um, which a lot of times in this, this time compare, uh, will show you kind of that give and take because you can't have both. You can, you can often, uh, if you're driving at the limit, you can be fast in, slow out, slow in, fast out. Sometimes it's a matter of finding, uh, where that balance is. It's, it's, uh, you know, if, if you're talking competitive laps, you're rarely just slow in and slow out. And what's, um, uh, and what's cool about the time compare bar is it's, it is such a quick tool to, to see that if it's, if it's running up, you know, you were slow in and you were fast out if it's, if it gains the other side. So the, the time compare bar gives you a, a real quick indication. Then you would go up like you did. You went right up to the speed trace and, and understood exactly what happened. Then you would, of course, add maybe another channel or two to understand why that happened. I always follow that what happened, where did it happen, why did it happen map, right? Which you, you're walking through as we were doing that. So perfect, right. perfect analogy there. Okay. Um, so I, I'll, uh, this, this is a, from BIR, this is a sequence of S's. And in this, in this section, um, there's a lot of things that are happening that are linked together. So to me, um, you know, to me, this is great data and, and I can learn a lot from it, but I'm going to use these other two points as maybe better examples where there's not as much uh, happening that's contingent on the other pieces. Um, so I'm going to move over to, to this piece uh, and I've just zoomed in uh, to the, to the next section that my, my speed time compare shows that, Hey, you want to look at this. Um, and we, as we were talking, this is, um, this is a matter of slow in and fast out and fast, you know, through a corner. Um, now I have this other, other component here as well that, that, that okay, the red, the red driver is winning here, but losing here. Um, I know this track, um, and I know, um, where this corner is that, and that what's going on here did not define this. Um, but we can find that in the data as well. So, you know, just because the driver is fast here, it didn't, it didn't cause him to also be slow over here. Um, so how am I going to define this? So again, we're, we're looking at where to look and then this is what's going on and then Let's see why that's going on. So a couple of a couple of things that I add uh, typically are uh, the driver inputs. Um, so I've added throttle position, um, and this is a this is a little bit of a, a weird translation on this specific car, um, just because that's how the ECU works, and we're using a can stream. So um, this is really 100% throttle, um, but it just it shows a, a fade in. But but when we start getting down into, into partial pedal, this, this makes sense. Um, and then we've got brake pressure. How much, um, how hard am I pushing on that pedal? Um, so in this case, uh, we, we've got um, 
up to the point that we split, which is roughly right here. And I don't always put the cursor on the, the piece I'm talking about because sometimes it obscures it. So I'll use the pointer to kind of to kind of show what what I'm looking at, um, just as, just as I would when I'm looking at it with my own eyes. So right here is where the the piece is kind of split. And oddly, you know, there's nothing going on in the break in this in this area, and there's really not much going on in the in the throttle pedal. Maybe a little bit more hanging on to the pedal, um, but then you know, okay, so maybe maybe later on um, this driver. Well, they they certainly broke earlier. They certainly released the throttle, and they they certainly didn't didn't come back to full throttle before that application of the brakes. Um, so for me, again this is this is a good analysis of this level of the onion so i'm going to peel a little deeper um i'm going to add my lat g's here um and i'll go ahead and add a longitudinal as well um so so the long g you know and especially on a on a car where you don't always have the these these other car specific traces um or you know if if i'm driving at a, at a track i have a an aim solo that i keep in my backpack and i throw it in any car that i drive an aim solo doesn't have um can access so it so it's not going to have additional data so i can i can ignore uh well i can translate um these these specific inputs uh and i can look at um these G forces a lot of times and um, get a rough idea. Even though I can't see exactly when I when I ramped into that brake pedal, I know that based on the fact that the car started slowing right here, um, that that's approximately what I did with the pedal. Or even that the car accelerated just a little before that, right? It went above zero on the longitudinal Gs. Clearly, you you even touched the throttle right. a little bit, even if you didn't have. For those of you out there that were solos, you you can actually pick up a bit of that even without, uh, like James said, even without having those other additional channels. Right. So so this section of of track, uh, this is also a combined section. This is called the uphill S's. Uh, for those of you familiar with VIR, um, and so what what gave my red driver the ability to do this, and as I, as I start bringing it backwards, there's the red driver gave up a little bit of throttle right there. Interesting because that's, that's the faster driver, but, but they started, as I look into the lateral G's started dictating uh, a little more clearly um, what the, uh, what the car was doing. They started, it started in, in my terms as a, as a driver coach started um, dictating that car's position on track. And so, you know, I, in, in my opinion, what happened here is the um, the the car gave themselves more more radius by by holding a um, holding a better track position. They as they were coming through this uphill S's section, they they held the position. Um, so, so when they go through a blind turn ten, they're they're able to go through with with this additional corner speed. Yeah, um, by, by by placing themselves by by looking at that lateral G, the driver was placing the the car better for the the next two corners after that, even though and maybe gave up that little bit to put the car where he wanted it, and then boom, all of a sudden it was appropriate for the next couple of corners where where he gained what looks like probably what uh, you know four or five miles per hour. So. Right and right and what is the gain? Well, I, I'm going to come come to the gain here in just a moment because we talked about this section and I said oh, I I know, I know that track that section doesn't matter to me. Well, okay, let's get rid of yeah I know that track. Let's let's talk about why this why this isn't important. Um, this isn't important because I can see that we're back to full throttle. Um, we're not uh, you know we're we're not braking. We, I know we're not braking because there's no braking input here. But if I didn't have that sensor, I would also know we're not braking because we're not um, we're not diving the car forward. And really, we're not giving it any lateral input either. The car is just accelerating down a straight. Uh, and you can see that over here in the in the map. Um, and if I zoom in a little bit on this on this section. Um, it is a straight and oh, there it is. Um, this is where our, our red car does something kind of atypical. Uh, if I looked at a sequence of, of laps, I could see that that's, that's not typical. Um, so that's probably passing a car at the, at the entrance of that turn, which explains this, this decrease in speed. Um, so, so that's just my quick analysis of why I can throw that out and not worry about that, that piece of it. So if I look at this sequence, I, I would say that this sequence was started um, right about here. This is when the line started to diver 
to diverge. This is when um, we gave up a little throttle. We we gave up more throttle here. We started started holding a position rather than rather than being as committed to the early throttle. Um, so from here, and I'm going to use this delta tool over here. Um, so from this point, which is our base to the end of this event. When, what is the end of this event by the time it's, uh, we're able to go full throttle? So the Delta tool um, shows you your, your cumulative distance through the, through the small section you select. So if I look down here in the reference lap, again, in this, in this time compare, um, ultimately the, the total amount is, is over here. Um, but as I look in this in this small piece, what did I gain from just doing this small piece? 0.379 seconds. Um, I'm sorry, uh, that's reversed, isn't it, Roger? I'm, yeah, I'm yeah. backwards on that. Two, 284 was what the difference is. 379 is where the second click actually was. Okay, so yeah, almost three tenths of a second. I mean, three tenths a, of a second. Substantial. Right. And and I know I just need to not you know sometimes we think as a driver you've got to attack that corner. We're not pushing hard enough, and this is a great example of where I need to actually be a little bit more uh, finesse, a little less less shove it in there, and then work on my corner speed through that corner, and then back on the throttle and, and get out of it. And that's three tenths. So um, exactly. I'm gonna I'm gonna back out of here. I'm gonna turn and off. While, and while you're doing that, uh, the um, uh, let let's start up the next the next poll, and let's take a look at um, experience level. How while uh, while while James gets ready to to do the next one, uh, your experience level. In, um, in in using in using the hardware or the software, what um, um, this is a this is a single answer one by the way, and uh, just give us an idea. This helps us again while while James is getting ready for the next uh, little segment. This gives us another pretty good idea of what what are the next webinars that we're going to do. What level of uh, of uh, what is our target audience, right? With when you're when you're looking at uh, uh, of generating these uh, these next few webinars, so I appreciate uh, appreciate you taking just a minute to to answer those uh, answer those polls. We're about up at the number already where we were on that first one, so uh, we'll let that one run for just another minute or two, and then uh, and then we'll share the results of this one for you, just so you can uh, so you can take a look at it. Let's uh, we're about uh, we're about 45 seconds into it. We're going to go ahead and end the polling here in about five seconds, and then uh, so if you haven't selected one, grab it real quickly. And then uh, let's go ahead and end the polling and let's share those results so, so you guys can take a look at it. The, uh, the, the number one um, group that we have here is, is that one to two years, but we have uh, quite a bit of uh, brand new users as well, right? You know, just right behind it. So it gives us an idea of, of uh, our, our next webinar. So I do, uh, I do appreciate, appreciate you doing that. We've got a couple more that will come up with uh, later to help us into the future. So with that, James, go ahead and pick the third. You, you, we looked briefly at one there early and then the middle of the lap up there by the oak tree corner. And then I think we're gonna maybe study the, the one a little bit farther down that was a big large change. Go ahead and hit that one next. Okay, awesome. And you know, as as we talk about user experience here, um, you know, we we're now staring at uh, five different lines on the screen. Um, <laughs> just as a, as a reminder, um, we it, it's it's very much um, it doesn't require this level of analysis. Really, um, I could turn off a lot of these and say, okay, I need to focus in in this area, this area, this area, and I need to carry more rolling speed here. That's all I need to know. I need to figure out as a driver how I have to carry more rolling speed. And then, you know, as you, as you get more user experience, that's when you learn to peel that onion and get deeper and deeper into all the, all the very specifics. Because, you know, if we've, if we've said um, there's three tenths on the table in the sequence of turns, um, I mean, as a, as a newer driver, I'll take two tenths of that three tenths and, and feel really good about it. And then <laughs> when, when uh, coming up with that last tenth around the track, really matters to me, then I'm going to be down at a very micro level in how to come about that. So, so don't get, don't get paralyzed by the, by the number of lines. Um, you don't, it, it, it's an onion. You can, you can start with the, the outside piece. Um, okay. So, so later, later in the track, um, and this is my, this is my third piece. And, you know, I, 
I don't, I don't always use as, I, as I'm trying to blaze through data as quickly as I, as I can. I don't always use every every tool here. Um, you know, it's if I use this delta function um, and I can say that this sequence from here is a base point to over here, um, and that is worth yeah, five half tenths. A second, doing that half right. a second. Yep. Right. Like half a second. So that's that's using the delta function, but the reality of it is, I you know when I'm going through data quickly, I say, well, that's sitting at negative 0.1, and I go over here, and that's at four four tenths. That's that's my half second. So you, you know that's just quick math in your head, but yep. but certainly the tools are all available if if needed. Um, so for half a second, um, this one is probably one of the biggest on the track, and and it's big because it's also um, going down the front straight of the, the track all the way down a long front straight. Um, so this is one of these cases where, and, and we talked about it earlier, this isn't super common, but really it looks like um, not only do I need to be faster into this turn um, and be later on my braking as I, as I initiate that and then um, essentially deal with the results of when I chose to initiate it. That's, that's always what you're kind of doing on the, on the braking side of things. We assume you're braking at threshold. Um, and then I can be a little faster in the corner and then I can, it looks like even come onto the throttle uh, more aggressively as, as I look at the slope of, of that line there versus the, the slope of this line. So, you know, a more aggressive throttle application. So gosh, um, what, what am I doing? Uh, what, what can I do here um, to, to get all those things? And to me, that points to um, a track position a lot of, a lot of the time. Um, you know, I'll, I'll come up with the, uh, you know, here's my here's my pedal positions, um, uh, braking, braking throttle. Um, okay, we know we're we know we're accelerating deeper into the turn because we can. This is this is blue line peak, um, red line peak is a little further along. So we know that we're accelerating deeper into it. We know that we're braking deeper. That's that's what develops this this piece of the pie. And then it's not a shocker to see um, when we talked about that slope change um, as we accelerate out uh, that we're accelerating a little bit more aggressively. But honestly, what what is a little surprising to me, um, and I think as you as you get more comfortable with data and then how your specific car works and so forth, when that looked like a, a pretty uh, pretty decent slope difference, um, we're only talking about the difference between thirty two percent and 28% uh, pedal position. So sometimes um, sometimes what an engine takes to, to make a difference isn't much, uh, depends on, on throttle body size and what that efficiency is and so forth. Um, and then sometimes, uh, and I'm sure you'll talk about this at some point when I think about um, in the car, how I'm gonna actually drive the car to this data and what lines I need to create. Um, one of the, you know, to me, one of the most embarrassing things is, um, telling somebody, ah, it was flat there. Um, and then you look at your data and you're like, ah, oh, no, it wasn't flat there. And you can't make the data lie. I've tried so long, you just can't make the data lie. But, but when I look at, at this, uh, this throttle position piece, um, you know, in, in the middle range of the throttle, maybe that's a, a decent difference, but I think a lot of times, and, and again, depending on the car, at that upper range, at that 90% at that to 100% throttle, that little lift that you're doing for yourself to make you feel yourself feel good, um, maybe you can get rid of that. I'm, I, you know, and this is like like all things data. These are things that you work up to, and this isn't uh, this isn't saying well. Well, James said it, I was ninety, so I should just go ahead and hold it flat, and that would be just fine. And and look what look what I did to my car. You don't, you know, everything work into it incrementally. But what I'm saying is, um, when you're when you're at max throttle opening, sometimes you can just hold it flat, and so sometimes the data gives you the confidence to to do what you think you might be able to do. Yeah, especially when you're comparing against another driver. And, and in this case, the, uh, you, you just studied it from the red line and, and you, you looked at it, your, your mindset was, I'm the red driver. And look at, I was able to take it in deeper and go out. The, uh, the interesting uh, opposite of that is, okay, now you're coaching the blue driver, right? And you're going, okay, I, look, the car will do it, right? And, uh, and now you know, maybe we need to work you up to going a little bit deeper and continuing to come off, coming off uh, the corner fast as well. Right. So, so it, you know, it, we've, we've looked at throttle input. Uh, we looked at brake input. Um, again, by the, by the speed trace, that's no surprise. Um, so I kind of come into this GPS map and see, okay, well, what, 
what could be different and Interesting. you know there it is through the through this last turn through the where the, where our x is over here on the gps map um essentially the apex is or not that this isn't the apex this is the lowest speed point of this um which is really just the the point that braking is done before we start coasting through this this last there is a little bit of a coast point and, and that's okay um but it's a matter of letting the car roll and then making it do a little bit more work um and in a, in a later group uh, i think we're going to talk about slope of line and so forth and and vir to me is one of these tracks that you you've got to be thinking about the elevation of the track and how you're how you're vertically loading those tires and i think that this is a great example because i know that this is a, a part that the track is falling away uh, from the car so not as much grip and then here the slope changes and the and the track starts to grab you so um, suddenly the, uh, the the red driver is making the car do more work and holding the car tighter in that section um, and being able to maximize grip at any point in the track no surprise that's that's what gives us the ability to drive faster and that's i think that's what we're seeing right here uh in the speed trace we're just we're just faster we're entering you know again i'm doing the math in my head six miles faster as, as i look over here you could you could do a, a different way to compare um but we're and we're carrying that not all the way through because there's a little bit later to later to throttle here um so now it's only two miles an hour faster but gosh two miles an hour faster which is you know further down the straight is you know, yeah. 1.7 miles an hour faster, um, 1.7 miles and fat, uh, uh, 1.7 faster down the front straight, all the way down the front straight. I'll take that. Ab absolutely. Yeah, it's a it's a long straightaway. The other the other thing that I found interesting was this this little this little pull off of the throttle, which you mentioned earlier, but it, it is also happening. And if you I'm going to get the mouse out of the way like you did, the, the red one was actually rolling out you know really well right you know three miles an hour better right there and you notice that they the, the two lines start to come together a little bit of that is that throttle but not but for me looking at the map as much of it was the additional rotation of the car you went from drivers the red one being the left of the blue one and then pinching the car a little bit tighter and using that that banking then that that slope of the roadway that you talked about and so there's a there's a uh, there's a converging of the two speed traces here and a little bit of it could be from the throttle but a, a little bit of it also could be because of the driver is is cornering a little harder and using that slope so uh, interesting to always dig in what happened where it happened and then if that why is always the is 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 almost always the most critical piece and it's uh and you can see it here as well and and one thing i've you know this is a little bit of a bad habit of mine um i uh i i just assume that we're all in the same gears that when I'm comparing things I'm, I'm because that is one of the things as a driver I define very early on what gear do I need to be in and unless the situation is really weird then I'm going to be in that gear um, but you know this this blip and that's not enough for a shift usually or, or you know if it was one of the the newer you know whether it be an automatic or some sort of paddle shift car maybe you know maybe something there um, but it's worth a check just to just to make sure that um, with an rpm trace that we are talking same gear here and yep. and we are you know back here we chose different times to go into it but um same gear so interesting to see the rpm spool up there for a little bit i think there was a loss of traction right there as well coming off that corner which is kind of interesting right um and that's <laughs> you know that's that's where the curbing is and so you know interesting wow. is that as that spins up <laughs> yep. um that's also yep. the reason for that little bit of a check there i uh, you know you we're, we're accelerating no we're back off as it spins up and we're going to grab Traction. That's the yep. that's the experience level of somebody from the track and, and somebody like James that knows data and knows the cars extremely well that you can find those little things like that pretty quickly. It's pretty cool. Yeah. Okay. Um, you want to look into that other other area or how are we doing for time? Let me uh, let me let me while while you, while you think about that one for a second. Let me start uh, start one more poll here that that we'll use in the middle, and um, I, I, the a poll that is that is the type of motorsports the type of motorsports that you guys are, are uh, uh, participating today. How much, uh, what kind of forms of, of motorsports do you have uh, that, uh, that you're running? This is, a, this is a single answer, I think. And it, it just give us an idea. And, uh, and again, it helps us for, for uh, understanding you know, future, future sessions. We start to use a little bit different forms of data. You know, uh, certainly we have tons of users in, in all of these different uh, forms of motorsports. So we'll have some 
some motorcycle data in the in the near future and uh, some karting data uh, maybe even some oval track stuff snowmobiles you know different things so so keep that in mind as uh, as you answer this you're helping us define what we uh, what type of data it, it is always interesting though is uh, even though maybe you are i see some numbers in here maybe you're a motorcycle racer and you were looking at some sports car data the data is while there is some small little differences in how you analyze it you know at that last little bit Everything we're showing you here today, it goes across the board, whether it's off-road trucks or, or BMWs, right? It, it, the, using the time compare bar works the same in, in, in all these different forms. But, but uh, we, we, of course, want to use some of the different types of uh, data that, uh, that you guys are using as well. So perfect. I appreciate that. Let me, I'm going to end that polling and then let's share it just real quickly and um, give you an idea of kind of what the numbers were. And, uh, and why we're maybe talking about sports cars today, you know, auto racing and sports cars, because of, uh, you know, the numbers are fairly large. Uh, so the, um, I appreciate that, you guys helping me uh, get perhaps some data for these kind of things. It's, uh, it's helpful. We'll do one more here at the end, one more poll, that, which is future topics where you guys can help me even dig in a little bit deeper, uh, data analysis, track maps, you know, uh, ECU protocols, what, whatever uh, you guys think is, is helpful. So, so James, is there, is there another uh, point or two that you might want to, somebody was talking about wanting to see a little bit bigger on the screen of where we were talking. This was that corner James was talking about, if you're familiar with VIR, it's the, uh, it's the last corner getting onto the front straightaway and start finish line being down in, in this area over here. So that's where we were, uh, that's where the, the final one he was chatting about uh, as well. James, anything else you'd like to add into uh, your discussion? Just to, uh, just to address one of the questions I've got over here on the screen, um, okay. where, where do you define uh, the starting point and the end point of, of, of a sequence? Um, and, and, you know, we talked about specifically, um, make sure I've got the mouse here. Um, we talked about this point being um, when, when we started doing something different, when, when this driver started coming off the throttle early. So that would be um, the early point. And then, you know, what is the late point? Well, it'd be, it, it'd be, when when the driver's back on full throttle, but again, we've got this weirdness here of not on full throttle, but again, it was because we were passing a car, we dug in a little bit deeper. Um, this is a little bit more clear over in this example that we just went through. Um, it's just a corner, or it really it's an S section sequence of corners. So it's from full throttle to back to full throttle, or, you know, when I'll often, when I look at this and, and think, um, what's the, what's the payout? Um, you know, I'm back to full throttle over here, but the, the fact is this, this change and what I did with more corner speed and more throttle application pays out all the way to the end of this lap. And then really it, it's going to pay out all the way until the braking zone for turn one, which continues into the next lap. So, um, I'll, I'll go ahead and hit one more point on track. And okay. again, if, okay. if I'm looking at, um, one, two, three points of, of where the biggest change is, um, this one, like I said, is a little bit more um, complex. Um, it's complex because uh, this, this is a full throttle section. And then through the next bunch, this is a left turn, a right turn, a right turn, a left, right, left. Um, up until this point. So that's, that's a lot going on there. Um, you know, and again, to that question, where's the sequence? Well, the sequence is from where um, I was, I was straight and I can save my defined point where everybody will, will want to be and be able to be independent of setup is the right side of the track uh, up until the point where full throttle and, and again, have tracked out fully to the right side of the track where everybody can get to independent of setup for the sequence of corners. So that this defines, um, what the event was, um, but then again, if we look at the at the time compare, what we did in this, and then ultimately ending with more more corner speed here, um, ultimately means the payoff for, for for this goes maybe a little bit deeper than this. It goes yeah. all the way up to up to the top of the hill. Yeah, you can't hardly see the, even the, visually see the difference in the speed trace, but clearly with the blue line dropping, the 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 speed all the way up the climbing S's was was uh, was higher, right? Because right. the blue trace is just continuing down. So this is, you know, and this, this sequence of turns and, and, and turns are, you know, at this track, especially it's, it's anything that you're, you can't just be end with being full throttle pause and a break is a sequence and likely affects the other turn. Um, you know, I, 
this was painful for me early in my driving career because I just wanted to be fast everywhere. Um, I wanted to go through every turn as fast as possible and just make those tires work. And I could tell that they were working. Um, but when you're analyzing this, the, the reality of it is, and especially with link turns, um, you, you have to think about uh, if I'm, if I'm maximizing the corner speed in this one turn, is that hurting me in the next turn? And this, this sequence to me is a good example of, and so we're back on, on throttle here. And this is, and I, again, I know that this is a straight, um, you know, okay. So James knows it's a straight. Why do we, why do we know it's a straight? Because our, our uh, longitudinal G goes back to zero right about here. So we know that this is just a straight. Um, but, maximizing how deep we can drive into this corner. Um, again, red line going deeper, um, a little bit more aggressive on braking. So there we go. We see it um, because I've, I've got double the, double the brake pressure there. Um, so when I say more aggressive on braking, I'm talking about that, that slope that's, that's much steeper. Diverging um, or converging lines are really, really important. Absolutely, and and defined peaks. Um, you know, the blue the blue line has more of this rolling shape to it versus a de defined peak, which meant I accelerated and then I braked. Um, I maximized I maximized my area under the curve of the speed trace. Um, releasing the brake pedal um, allowed more corner speed. Um, again, four five miles an hour, four miles an hour corner speed. Um, and now this is this is the interesting piece of this. Um, the we get, we gain speed as the red driver through the, through this section um, and acceleration out of here um, and we, we gain significant amount if I, if I look down here in the speed time compare um, three tenths, three tenths. Um, well yep three tenths but then I lost it um, <laughs> and I lost it because I because I wasn't um, in the best position um, on the track and I couldn't go full throttle and now all of a sudden I'm four miles an hour down um, if, as I look up at the GPS speeds at, at this one section. Yeah. Um, and, and then at the end of this series, when I'm back on throttle, um, the speeds are roughly the same. We're a half mile an hour apart and it's that half mile an hour that pays out as I, again, as I look at the time, time slip, um, 0.16 to, uh, so I lost a half of a 10th there. So I'm not, you know, that, you know, I want that, you know, at some point I want that half of a 10th, but right now I want that three tenths. Um, <laughs> so, you know, the, the reality of it is I'm going to gain three tenths from the initiation here to here, and then I'm going to lose half of it to here because you can't, you can't be fast everywhere. You've got to pick and choose. And to me, data helps show you where um, to make those choices. Perfect. Perfect. I, I think that's a pretty darn good overview. We talk about, um, we talk about, James is talking about peeling the onion, right? And, uh, and it fits right into what, you know, some of the stuff we talk about in all of our seminars, which is what happened, where it happened, why did it happen, right? You, you got to figure out the, the first level and then you just keep digging in until you get either to the center of the onion and you know what you've done or the, you, in, in, in the other analogy, which is why did it happen? Why, why was I you know, a little bit slower through the second half of that corner with the red trace, right? So it's uh, different words, but we're saying virtually the same thing, which is uh, really the way that data analysis needs to work. So it's, uh, it's, it's pretty interesting. I, I appreciate the, uh, the, the, the chat, James, your experience with, with coaching drivers and of course at this track, but uh, the, 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 the tool itself works anywhere in any, any form of motorsports. So using those same basic principles is an important thing. So, and, uh, so and you, uh, you say any form of motorsports, um, you know, I'm a, I'm a car racer and that's my primary deal. Uh, I have a mount on my jet ski and when I go run buoys at the lake. I use the same tools. I don't have, I don't have a uh, break, but I let off the gas and I can see where that I do that. And, um, you know, as I have a closed circuit, um, I, I know where to pick up speed, where to, where to give that balance, et cetera. So this is, this really does apply to everything. It is, it is amazing. It is amazing that way, isn't it? I've seen them on jet skis and wind boards and downhill racers, <laughs> coasting racers and, and uh, skateboards and all sorts of things. Right. So pretty, pretty interesting. Uh, let's uh, let me jump over here real quickly. Uh, I'm not even going to go to the other slide. We're, we're going to kind of open it up. I'm, I see there's a couple of questions that are that are still here, James, and maybe we'll, we'll read them real quickly. And, and uh, uh, some of them, couple of them don't necessarily pertain to this perfect perfectly but the the, the um, um, a list of buttons that are used by aim in race studio 2 there uh, I, I have a document uh, Jim is, is asking that question Jim if you um, at the end of this you'll see a contact page you'll have my email address if you e I think you've emailed me in the past email me and I will um, 
I will, uh, I have a, a PowerPoint that talks about all of the different um, functions inside of Ray Studio, uh, all the pull down menus and all of the, uh, and all the icons and what they mean. I'll send you a copy of that. So on uh, Charles, on, on break PSI, can you show if you are unsettling the car balance, uh, e.g. too quick to release the brake caused unweighted unwanted weight shift. What, what we're talking about today, Charles, that is a great question, maybe a little bit deeper than what we want to go here. What that will show, what we can see is, is the result of that in the time compare bar, right? If, 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 if this little problem right here would have been because of that, and we, we could look at brake pressures and, and, and see if, if, if that happened and the car started to rotate or whatever, what we would see in the first step of this is the time compare bar showing the, the, the loss from there, there forward. We'd want to dig in the, the last part of that is the wire the deeper into the onion why why then did we lose this james explained why why it happened here but if it's in the case that you're talking about you know um, break psi unsettled under you know a trail breaking kind of a format that we would dig in and we would uh, look at enough data to understand that why for that one as well so the um uh, kind, kind of interesting interesting questions i'm going to jump back into the 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 PowerPoint slide. We've we've kind of covered the, the questions and answers of, of some of the different things that we wanted to, to, to cover there. The, um, the the next the next couple of things is 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 training and support. I'm going to start up our last our last poll and I'm going to talk my way through a couple of other things here. The the last poll being uh, future webinar topics. I'm going to launch that poll and uh, let's see if it's if it's uh, working. This one here is um, is, is multiple choice. There it goes, I think. Yep, there it goes. Uh, multiple choice. If, uh, if there's some topics there, don't just pick them all, but uh, if there's topics there, uh, go ahead and, and select them. While, while that is going on, let's, let's talk about uh, other forms of training and support that is available to you uh, from AIM. The, uh, we, we have customer support, all, all these guys that are nice enough to come in here and help us answer questions, plus some other folks that are still back at uh, either working at home or in, in the office. Uh, certainly, once the once we get through this, um, our customer support level is going to go right back to where it was at the track. We're we're here for you during the phone calls at the 800 number. Um, so once once we get back out there, get, continue to look for us in our sprinter vans and our backpacks and wandering around and answering questions of all the all the users of our products. So look forward to seeing everybody back at the track here here shortly. The uh, we also have, including this this uh, webinar, within an hour or so. The, uh, the, this is being recorded and it will be placed up on our Learn Fast YouTube site. So not only are the webinars going up there, but we have uh, uh, almost 60 videos that are very specific about functionality, right? There, there is a time compare uh, video where we actually go through some of these things as well. There's uh, GPS lap inserts. We, you know, I, I, I seen some other notes on there about different things and, and uh, some of the questions are, are, are are uh, answered in here as well. So uh, visit that YouTube uh, uh, eFast, I'm sorry, eTraining Learn Fast site. Uh, the emails you've gotten have, have links to the, all the previous webinars from here and, um, and, uh, and, and these are included right in there in the same area. We're, we're, we're moving those all into uh, uh, different little places and, and storing them in, in better places on the, on the YouTube site as well. So hopefully make them easier for you to find. Pretty darn good search functions at uh, on the YouTube site as well. The um, the last thing that uh, we'll talk about is what what is coming on Thursday. Our, our next one we're going to do have another co-host program. We're going to have um, Peter Kraus uh, has his office right there at VIR. So maybe we'll probably talk a little bit about VIR again. But uh, next webinar next uh, this coming Thursday, uh, 10 a.m. Pacific, 1 p.m. Uh, Eastern. Uh, these all start. We're going to start these until at least through the end of May, probably a little longer. They're always going to start at this uh, 10 a.m. Pacific, 1 p.m. Eastern. And uh, Peter Kraus is going to talk about this. And what it's going to be is the Smarty Cam best practices, all the way from, hey, here's the two different pieces, you know, the different hardware that's available to you. What is a great way to mount it? What, you know, talk about some real brief settings. Um, and the, but and then jump in and talk about how to. Um, how to view a little bit. Uh, maybe we won't view a video, but we'll, we'll look at a picture or something and, and talk about different ways that uh, you can use SmartyCam to help, us, help you with your data analysis. Uh, a pretty good topic, one that a lot of people have asked for. So I, I, know, I, I believe Peter's uh, listening to this one right now and, uh, and he, he will be leading the, uh, the co-host role on, uh, on, in a couple of days on Thursday, April 16th, okay? The, um, the last thing that we'll do here is we'll, uh, we'll 
just talk a little bit about the contact information. I'm going to end that polling and I'm going to show you, uh, share the results for everybody so you can kind of get an idea of what, uh, what is out there. Then I'll get it out of the way so you can see all the contact information. Data analysis, still a pretty strong um, first place when it comes to uh, topics that people are wanting to see. Uh, track maps are right in there. We're, uh, we're, uh, we're putting together some ideas on, on, on track maps and some other things that, uh, that, that you're going to want to see. So again, we are looking at these very, very deeply and, and we're, uh, we're adjusting. That's why we haven't shared all of the upcoming um, topics all the way through the end of May so far. I have some ideas of what we're going to do. They're, they're on paper. They're, 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 they've kind of mapped them out, but I want the ability to change these things fairly quickly if we see, you know, folks are really uh, interested in something else. That's why we're not sharing them. We're going to share them one ahead of each one, and then you'll see it in the emails that you get uh, as we're leading in here. So, so um, uh, that's where, that's what everybody asked for. And then the, uh, the, the, la the last little bit I want to talk about as we close down, uh, contact information. Um, my, my contact information is there, and so is James. Uh, James has been nice enough to um, provide the data that you saw and, uh, and, and of course, our contact information for him. The data is, uh, we've had a, throughout the first four or five of these webinars, a few, more than a few emails asking for the data that we use to to demonstrate the particular item. Um, so when you go back and watch, rewatch us on YouTube, we are willing and we're, we're ready. You send me, uh, James or I, or any of the uh, info at, uh, at, at AIM Sports, uh, supported AIM Sports. However, give us a call. We will send you the email, I'm sorry, send you the data from those two data files we just looked at. So you can uh, recreate exactly what we saw if, uh, if that's uh, of interest to you as well. So we'll have that available to you as well. Uh, Roger at AIM Sports or James at Bimmer World and um, give us a holler if you, if you need anything. Of course, any of the rest of our guys. Any, uh, any other comments by the, by the folks that are answering questions? Is there anything we missed or is, are we in pretty good shape? Looks like, uh, it looks like we're in pretty good shape, but there was yeah. a question that um, I wanted clarification on. Okay, perfect. Um, so unfortunately, software, uh, it's not something that, that I, I don't think anybody knows 100%, uh, maybe Emiliano. Uh, but the, uh, the, the compression of distance, how is it possible for uh, two laps with different drive lines uh, to arrive at the, the same distance? Like, where is the compression? There's a shrink and swell factor, right, Emiliano? I'll, I'll, I'll speak just for a second, Emiliano, if you want to uh, fire up your microphone and talk about how we, how we stretch. You know, these two drivers did not drive the exact same distance to get here to the end, and, and what do we do? The, uh, I have found that to be very, very good, and obviously there is some stretching because if we go into the, you know, we talked about them a couple of uh, uh, sessions ago, we talked about channel reports, and this is showing the actual number of feet that the driver drove for the full laps, right? And uh, in, in the channel report, and they're not exactly the same, but yet we, uh, in the software, we end up with uh, these things working together. Emiliano, you have anything you would like to add from the, from the uh, software writing side of it? Your microphone is muted right now. If you want to unmute yourself, you can, uh, you can throw something out okay. here for us. There you go. Here I am. Okay. Yep. <laughs> Distances are, are uh, simply shrinked uh, in Ray Studio 2 analysis. So if you have uh, a lap uh, which you you you, you run uh, for seven sixteen thousand uh, feet and uh, another one sixty thousand sixteen thousand and one hundred uh, that are shrinked one uh, one over each other. Uh, this happens with the Ray Studio Two analysis in the newer software we are we are building. Data will be aligned uh, more, more smartly. Uh, we will use GPS position with uh, kind of uh, running beacon uh, feet, up, feet uh, after feet uh, on the on, on the track. So it will be better. Perfect. Uh, what we have now is uh, it's enough. It has been enough for for a lot of uh, a lot of years for a lot of users. Uh, sure, if you want to compare now to laps with uh, very, very different uh, uh, drive lines. Uh, the comparison uh, could be, could, uh, could uh, result in being uh, a little bit uh, uh, deviating from, from, uh, from, from reality. Yeah. Yep. yeah, from reality, yeah, but 
it's uh, st still enough for the most of the of the analysis that you can you can do on the uh, on the time compare. Yeah, so we're taking that if 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 these were two were were 100 feet difference these two laps, we take that 100 feet over the course of 17 you know, thousand feet and we're stretching mm -hmm. that little bit over the entire thing. So in, in normal road racing, the, the line doesn't vary that much, uh, uh, whether it's cars or motorcycles, you get into off-road racing or dirt oval. And sometimes, you know, one driver's running the outside and the other driver's running the inside. Uh, then it be, you know, we start stretching, but uh, even with all of that, it still is fairly, um, um, it, it, it's, it still works really, really well. So, and, um, so I appreciate the, the comment, Robbie, did that cover it, uh, that you get a basic understanding? Do you think yeah, it was, everybody else? Yeah, I think so. It was, it was perfect for me. Um, I've also used it for 10 years and I've, especially on one to three mile tracks, I, I haven't had really any much of a, a discrepancy, even, even towards the end of the, um, the data set with, with deviation. Yeah, it's it's it, we know what's happening and we know it's working. It's just interesting sometimes to know what it did, right? We know that it works really well, but we were, we're nice question. The one thing I would say on this, and and I think AIM does AIM software does a tremendous job of of handling this. So Emiliano, uh, congratulations there. You know, versus some other that I've used. Um, you know, the the stretch that they that they use really does work quite well. Um, the only the only time I've seen and and sometimes uh, you know very occasionally in AIM, but more frequently in others, um, is if you're you're comparing a lap that has value and then sometimes that would that would be like an in lap or an out lap where where something is totally different um that snap function um you you can tell when something is not lining up correctly and and you can usually see where it starts going off um and you can use that snap function that that roger mentioned earlier to to say okay i i, I know i did this turn really well um at the tail end of the lap and so i just really need to see and you just you just slide those things over until your braking zone makes sense your your trough for your your corner speed makes sense and you just you just make them fit and then you look at the difference between the laps in your in your comparison and if you thought that this was one of those areas one of the quickest ways to do that is to come over to the and, and we'll, we'll, we'll we're going to do an entire webinar on this but if we zoom in on the gps map a, a ton right we i have over exaggerated this i am pretty darn happy that the red lap the driver on the red one was at the same spot on the track because these two x's are nearly the same spot on the track right if 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 that snap and that 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 uh, if we're shrinking and swelling or if the driver has just done a massively different driving line these x's will start to have some shift apart to them they'll be the, you will see the difference of, of on the track position at that point do what james was talking about you could hit the shift the, the the snap button and then we can align them in the gps map and then we know that for a hundred percent that the we've hit the brakes or hit the throttle at the we know exactly where that happened we'll do an entire webinar on just that of how to use that snap function in even a more advanced way so we'll talk about that okay okay Perfect. I'm going to uh, I'm going to I'm going to jump out of this just a little bit farther just so we can see the entire track. I'm going to jump back to our uh, back to our presentation and share the share the PowerPoint slide. Again, there's the uh, there's the information uh, for 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 James and I to get to get this data if it's uh, something that you have interest in. Um, and I will add one more little piece just uh, thinking ahead to Thursday's Thursday's webinar for the first time. I'm going to bring up uh, live as we're talking about Smarty Cam and kind of what's Smarty Cam and and Emiliano mentioned Ray Studio Three analysis. I'm going to bring up the, uh, the the a version of Ray Studio Three analysis and show a little bit of a couple pictures, a couple Smarty Cam videos, some data, and we'll uh, we'll briefly just for a minute or so give a give everybody the first view of uh, what Ray Studio Three analysis is going to look like in in the linked synced data and video uh, process. It fits it really well into the, to the Smarty Cam discussion that Peter is going to have. So, so uh, show back up on Thursday, you'll get a, a, a pretty good handle on what, uh, what, what Race Studio 3 analysis is gonna look like. Emiliano will, will try to make sure he's here for that as well, right? right so, um, perfect, I appreciate it, uh, everybody. I, I appreciate everybody coming. I, um, we, we're right at the hour that we, uh, that we expect to kind of go with these. So um, thank you all for coming and I look forward to seeing you this coming Thursday.